what was it that got everyone kicking off that you've said recently? Um, I think the, the main thing that's antagonised a certain uh, demographic is um, saying that you know ex-women footballers shouldn't be commentating on the, the Premier League and the men's uh, game. That should be left to the men who've played. People, it, you know, I'm not saying anything that's that, that radical. That's, that's the thing I'm kind of like, mm. it, as everyone's thinking this. This is not something that I just spontaneously threw out into the ether. It, obviously, as a football manager, you, you've got to be careful what you say because people are always trying to trip you up. And obviously, your priority is the team. But as a football fan, which is, mm. you know, I'm no longer employed, I'm, te I'm technically on the dole. Um, and I'm under no one's jurisdiction, you know, other than my own. And, and I'm just saying what I'm observing based on, I think, uh, enough time saved in the game to to have a credible opinion. Were you surprised when, when you put that tweet out by, by like the big reaction to it or did you expect that? Um, I, you know, when, when you'd have a, when you'd have a, a, an external projection of your thoughts into a kind of, social media space yeah. you don't expect people to be as emotionally engaged by it you know especially someone who the you know the insults are usually washed up crap player whatever it was and thug criminal or whatever and yeah. I, I didn't I, you know crap player is not fair no no but I'm the saying it, 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 it's, I, I, do you know what I was I was watching something on Michael Owen today where he was talking about um, they were laughing at him when he was talking about throwing the apple in the bin yes which was quite a weird way of telling a story but yeah. I could see what he was trying to say but it was a weird story yeah and everyone's on it going like he was crap knowing the comments because I just sometimes come well, for the comments Owen. oh yeah they were levering him to the point where I took a picture of it because I'm like they were, some people are like who's he I'm wow. like like this is how you, you, this is what you're dealing with like it's a, there's a lot of opinions out there now and, and they have access to you hmm. and a lot of them are really really unqualified and if you, if you call it out like they just they round on you and attack you and I'm like listen I've never backed away from anything yeah. I care massively about my um, uh, industry, you know, in terms of I was a young kid off a council state in Liverpool with not many options and I was given via being quite good at football a chance to change my, my obviously, um, my future and, and also some of my, some of my families and, and look after my family. And I'm okay, but if I don't call this out, there's a lot of footballers now who, who aren't getting a job just because they're white and they're male. Like literally, they've played and given the body to the to the game. You know whether this is CTE or actually breaking bones and getting operations, mm. and they can't get jobs after the bodies fail them in the industry because our industry's gone woke. Mm. And, and, and look, the girls are fantastic. They've got their own <laughs> WSL. Lionesses are superb. You know, I'm not against the best of the women coming and working in the men's game, but currently we've got like every ex woman player of colour. Who's got like inf like like influential um, followers getting gigs ahead of men who've played the game at the level required to give expert analysis? And I just think it's the wrong uh, way to empower women. It, it certainly doesn't. It it causes them to lose credibility, which which leads to a rise in sexism and misogyny, which is what we're trying to defeat by getting the best women across at some point mm. into the men's game, either as coaches. Um, I don't think we'll ever see it as a player because they're not big and strong enough, and that's controversial to say that. Um, we, we will see it the other way. You know, an inferior uh, um, man will transition and dominate the women's game. I was thinking about doing it myself, but I thought about doing that because I'm six <laughs> foot four. And you like crouch? <laughs> I've, yeah, I was saying to you just before. I don't like heading the ball just because I'm scared of someone else's head going to me. But if I'm playing women's football, that's not even a concern. I'm that far ahead above everyone I'd just be knocking I wouldn't have to worry about their head hitting mine so I did think about that but I'm not trans so I won't do but but okay so I guess the issue is that people don't think about it. it is a nice idea like you know let's bring people up who have not had the opportunities and women often don't have the opportunities in men's football and women's football there's not as much money the issue is I think as you're pointing out a lot of men and they don't all have loads of money who have played the game are losing opportunities and we don't think about those people yeah well, well that's one of the issues obviously I'm not going to play the victim card as a white male because it just doesn't wash you know sure uh, we, we, we you know unfortunately we have a different tariff um, of behaviour expected of us and when the certain things are said about us you know we, we don't have a right of mm. saying hang on that's wrong um so i walked through london today for instance and i'm like it's such a multicultural cosmopolitan city like and all i read on the news is like knife gangs and walk down this place such 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 a lovely melting pot of people 
Well, a football team is is, is the same. It's, it's a true meritocracy. So I would imagine all these areas, you know, they're all obviously part of the United Kingdom, part of England, part of the greater borough of London. But actually it's the local people at the, you know, at, at the every day walking up and down the streets that sell you fruit, veg, you know, sure. newspapers that make the community. And that, as, as each community transmits out, you get a healthy society or an unhealthy society. A, a, a football team's the same. You know, it's no, no one cares what your skin colour is. You're judged on, can you score goals if you're a striker? Can you make goals if you're a winger? Can you score goals if you're a bit of a bit of a shitbag as a, as a midfielder? Mm. You know, you know, you, you scored a few. Uh, yeah, but I wasn't known for that. You know, but no. you give a bit of license because you go, you know what? He doesn't like the tackling. So, so midfielders like me, we do the dirty work so that he can go and score the goals. Sure. Um, so and so then what? defenders who you know very physical in what they do, although fullback roles changed, and then goalkeepers who you know are, are usually mental. Like usually yeah. crazy to play the position, you know. You have to run and throw yourself at people's feet, oh and, and that ball's getting kicked as hard as they can, and so try not to flinch. Why? So, why is it a woman who's watched the game their whole life, maybe even played professionally, as you say, they played, they played professional? I mean, that's a much higher level than than um, um, some of the like who am I think uh, Adrian Childs or yeah. whatever he's talking about the football. He hasn't played at all. So why is he able to be there and not ex professional women? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a fair point. I mean. Uh, in, in terms of it, it, it's not about women not being in the game. I think, you know, you see uh, Kelly Cates, who's knee dag leash, um, obviously mm. Gabby Logan, who's obviously knee uh, Yorath. So come from football backgrounds, you see Hayley McQueen, um, Gordon McQueen's daughter at Sky. And there's there's lots of people we, we talked about, you know, cronyism, nepotism, whatever. We know the world it, it isn't fair. You know, it's sure. this is why I struggle with the, the, the thought of equality because equality only works off. We all start from the same spot and, I think this, the kind of Soviet Union attested to that not really being uh, the most productive way to engineer a healthy functioning society. So Adrian Childs is in a in a commentary position or a or a, an analysis mm. kind of position to ask questions. He's not he's like there the to anchor. add. Yeah, you know, he's, he's, I've got no problem with with because some of the best at that actually, I think in in the men's game are women. Okay, I think some of the women. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, get into naming names, but but I think some of those women are really good and are mm. much better than some some of the men. Gabby Logan, that is Gabby. Gab you're right. Gabby's She's good. Really host. good. Yeah, really good. So um, you're saying the experts who are being asked questions should be men who have played the game. Yeah, I'm like, as, as I say, if, if if I'm listening to the Formula One or the golf, I want people who've actually played in the Masters and played at Augusta under intense tournament conditions, and I want to see and hear from those people who've you know driven in Formula One races, mm -hmm. not the ones who've driven in. The ladies Formula Four series, and, and I'm being as kind as I can to them, saying it's probably like uh, indoor go kart racing compared to the Formula One, which is yeah. such is the difference between the, the speeds and, and the physicality from the men's elite level to the women's elite level. Like it's it's just you know, within the same rule set, and people argue with me all the time because I keep saying it's a different sport in essence.